this stands for, don't you, at the beginning? Which what? <laughs> World Wide Web? No. But yeah, that's right. We say to the kids, that's why you'd be very careful what you post. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like the, um, the change on that one to tattoo. People will talk about having a digital tattoo. Yeah. Oh, but that's a bit permanently, think about it. Uh, or can be. Uh, yep. I mean, Russell, you're one of the you're one of the executives. Um, what's your uh, what's your uh, spin on uh, uh, I guess on digital permissions? Ooh, probably not as much as we'd like it to be. Um, yeah, we'd probably be looking at well, one program for example is about four and a half thousand k. So and we're probably looking at least four or five. So yeah, probably getting up to twenty by the time you look at it. Oh no, I meant um, in terms of per, per, uh, permissioning. Uh, permissioning. Um, say for example, how did you guys um, <clears throat> uh, f phrase it, Polly? Uh, allowing the the work of the student to be published or something like that. Oh, media um, release forms. Yeah, media release forms. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of that. Um, we haven't put a lot of their stuff up electronically. It's made available. We've got the general release ones and um, digital ones for obviously your photos and so on. But in terms of the actual students' work, um, most of it's um, done in-house. We haven't put a lot up online. We haven't gone down that path yet. Hmm. Fair enough. We have enough trouble keeping our kids off um, Facebook and primary school <laughs> and teaching them <laughs> the etiquette of what, you know, the recommender recommendations should be followed, you know, it's sort of like the thing like pirates to say it's more of a guideline rather than a recommendation. Oh my gosh. Um, e even worse when you let them know you're supposed to be 13 and above to get web, uh, to, to get, um, what's he, uh, an account on Instagram hey, and all that. Hey, when the parents not much older than that, it's a bit hard to try and get through to them that uh, <laughs> you're supposed to be looking after the kids, you know, not being one of them. <laughs> that that's a good Agreed. point. Agreed. Yep, totally. All right. So uh, well, let's also welcome Menaka. Menaka um, is going to talk about uh, the Google Documents and the the integration as well. So. Um, Hello. Menaka. Hi. Hey, hi everyone, how are you all today? Hey, good, thanks Lanaka, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. <laughs> I was just laughing at your comment, I think Russell, what you were saying, when the parents are not old themselves and how do you yeah. stop them or educate them? And most of the time how problem at Ashcroft is um, um, not accessing the Facebook or other things, mm -hmm. it, Staying up late and playing the games that they're not supposed to be playing. Yep. Yep. Well, we talked about the video um, and also the computer games. The new um, right. over here we just recently changed, and a lot of them don't follow the guidelines and exactly. and wonder why they have problems later on. Right. That's right. And this game, like I have teenage boys and I don't let them play. We don't even let them buy the game in the first place, saying like, no, it's not for you. And I have stage two students saying to me, like, oh, but my parents love me to play as long as I don't go trouble them. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> oh, my heart just well, jumps out of my brain. The computer, as you know, and the more rubbish it goes in, later on it chews around and all of a sudden it pops out. And that is so true. Careful of the venue. Oh, careful yeah. of the venue when that occurs. Yeah. No, true. Anyway, is, yeah. Yep, sorry. Not morals, hey. No, you probably say that's a different webinar <laughs> yep. topic. <laughs> yep. Just, just like our little stint in politics uh, on, uh, on the previous webinar. Jeez, Russell, you're trouble, mate. You're trouble. I should invite you to more webinars. <laughs> hey, I live, I live in Western Australia. I've got time to pack the car and get away before you come get me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's. All right, John, can I make a suggestion? Go ahead. Go when you're ahead. going to post. YouTube, can you please mute these things off, censor it? Thank you very much. <laughs> let me let me do that now. My name is not really. <laughs> my name is two four point three. We're we're we're, we're going to make sure to uh, to edit that once it's uh, once I've uh, converted it to uh, to a WMV. So, all right. So, folks, um, uh, let's officially start. It's uh, going on to about uh, four. Sorry. Oh wow, we're 14 minutes overdue, so we just had a bit too much fun there. So, mm -hmm. uh, so really, really quickly, um, Menaka, let's get started on the interview. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, mate? 
um, repeating myself again, but um, I've been a teacher for the last six years, <laughs> straight after university. Uh, I'm actually early childhood trained. So I worked in childcare and preschool and then graduated myself to do school teaching to mm. see the grass was greener on the other side. Um, I've been doing that for six years now. I've been teaching across all stages, remedial classes, and I've been at Ashraf for the last six years as well. And uh, um, you were saying in the last webinar, you've basically seen um, the XOs pretty much from start, isn't it, when uh, Mr. Coletti uh, purchased them? That, that's students. exactly right. Um, we got the um, sugar base, the sugar labs, and then we changed it to Android, so I've worked with that as well, and um, I think personally, Changing it to Android was the best move to come across and do this and students being able to access that many apps. Um, so yeah, I've seen it from the start and mm. now I'm hearing about the Infinity laptop. So hopefully I get to see them as well. <laughs> sure, very, very yeah, soon. We, we'll get that. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> No worries. Um, we have 280 XOs at school, and that's for one EXO per child from kindergarten to year six. Fantastic. And uh, not making a fool of myself this time, yes, we do um, recycle the EXOs. After <laughs> the year six students graduate, we give it to the new kindergarten students. Brilliant. So it gets, it gets used um, across the board from uh, a kindergarten, not that's year right. one. It started from kindergarten. We start from kindergarten, that's right. Excellent. Well, um, could you tell us a little bit more about how you and your uh, students are using Google Docs? So I'll give you the presenter page. Bear with me for a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're ready, could you show us how you do Google Docs? Okay. Let me get a little All right. Um, I use Google Docs in all facets of my teaching for all the key learning areas, like I was um, speaking earlier. For the literacy, they would probably write a story or create a um, storyboard just using the illustration part of it. And or they can do a PowerPoint slide for a science topic. And I usually post all the assessments on there or any information that I found interesting onto the um, Google Classroom where students can access it. They have certain time period where they can come back, look at the assessments and say if they're struggling with it or they're happy to go and what angle they want to finish the assessment. So it's um, back and forth. They can ask for feedback before it's due to be presented. All my information, it goes on there from the beginning of the term, including my term overview and the feedback for the students. Um, they can straight away go use the Google Docs and upload their documents. Oh, well, sometimes they use the W on the Excel and try to upload it from there just because of um, importing of the um, photos or the music or the embedded videos, whatever they have to do. They have to go through the Excel app, the W, the Word document, and from there upload it onto them. Could you Google. give us a quick example, downloading a, a photograph from the internet and putting it on a document on uh, WPS and then putting it onto the Google Drive? Okay, I'm trying to access one. It works. Okay. Okay, they look for images what they want, pretty much like using a PC, and then finding what they want and taking a screenshot of it. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. or sometimes downloading it and then go back to depending on if it's not copyrighted they can access it if it's copyrighted they have to go and find a different image of course <laughs> um, it gets a little bit slow it's not working so I'll talk as I go along and if it works it works if not it's not yeah, of course. happening go ahead go ahead go straight on to the home page and look for the downloads and copy from there but sometimes I ask them to save it onto a USB and then come from there and um, pop it onto the Word document saying insert mm-hmm. and from there that's basically how we do it. They come here and insert picture, photos from the camera. Basically that's how we do it. Cool. I hope that answers your question. I'm trying yeah. to rush a little bit. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Because the main reason we're kind of wanting to go through this is because um, I know you wanted, uh, I think, um, John, you wanted to know a little bit more about uh, uh, the full integration of Google into the classroom, isn't it? Yes, that's right, yeah. So, could, uh, so while, while we're waiting for the, uh, uh, the thing to process, would you be able to uh, f- uh, ask Menaka, I guess, uh, what you had in mind to, to learn today? Sure. Um, so look, I guess I'm just looking at how I can use it um, in the classroom as best I can. The way I see it is that Google Docs would allow the kids to work on their XOs or work in the computer lab or work at home um, and keep all their information together. So I guess setting up um, folders for the kids at their work, um, being able to copy and paste into it and having links they can use is sort of what I'm thinking of. Um, but I guess I'd need to put my head around and have a look at it and see how that all functions. And um, I guess we're still making sure that everything's safe for the kids, um, that we can view all the work they do and, and that sort of thing. So I've had a little look at it, um, but that's sort of where I want to go with it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, John. Actually, what I did at the basic, I'm still learning as I go along as well. I created a classroom folder, and they usually give you a code once you create a classroom folder and you share the code with the rest of your students and they have to be invited. That's like an invitation or a code where they have to access it and they have to mention that code. It's case sensitive, so I usually ask them to cut and paste it and then it lets them through. They individually do not have a folder themselves, but it becomes part of the classroom folder. It's similar to being in a classroom. Yep. And then um, from there, it's um, interrelated to Google Drive. I'm not sure if you can see it in there. So it goes to a classroom folders and assessments. You can open as many folders as you want for your ass- assessments, one of those folders, or for your science unit or your math unit or the teacher resources. And yep. that, that, and when they get to post it, they share, and it become, it's all in my drive. Whatever you share with them, or whatever they share with you, yep. all those um, documents are in my drive. So it's pretty easy to do it once you get your head around it. And pretty yep. simple. It's become yep. like second nature to me now, and but I'm still learning. One of the issues with the Android is not being able to copy and paste the images straight onto Google Docs. So okay. the way we found around it was to go to the um, Word document on the EXO itself and try to create a document there. And um, if you have the document, if you go to Save As or Share, so you can go to Cloud Storage and you sh- go to Google Drive and share it there straight away. Okay. So if you're part of the DET from New South Wales, um, yeah, you don't have to do anything. You log in through your DET portal. Okay. Yep. I'm down in Victoria, so it might be a little bit different. But oh. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> no, that's okay. We'll sort that one out. <laughs> uh, I think I answered your question to the best of my yes. knowledge. Yep. That no, sounds good. Thank you, John. That's okay. <laughs> um, uh, as a suggestion, actually, if you um, uh, if you want to have a bit of a play on this, um, I believe in South Australia they're trialing this. They've given each school a Google account. So, say for example, oh, wow. 
karingle at gmail.com or something like that, or karingle primary school at gmail.com. And uh, each class has a, uh, uh, a Gmail account as well. That way the students can kind of use that login and go to that folder. It yep. does get difficult because you only get 15 gigabytes and kids love saving stuff. So it gets mm. eaten up so quickly. <laughs> mm. So that sounds all right. That sounds good. Yeah. So just a bit of something there. So, um, Menaka, um, let's getting back to you. Uh, when you're actually sharing your, um, I guess, uh, sharing your assessments on um, uh, on Google Google Docs, how do you normally do it? Do you just have a document on your classroom drive? Everyone downloads it and does their own. How does that work? Um, I log in as myself. I'm, I'm, the Excel I'm using is one of my students, actually. When I log in as myself, I am the controller, the administrator. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I can pretty much, whatever I put on there is open to everyone who has the code and gets in there. So they have to get in only once using the code. Once they've done that, straight away when they want to go to Google Classroom, it straight away takes them to that classroom. Mm. Um, I've opened up my assessment task here. This is from a student's perspective, the screen that you are watching. So it's all there. I've um, shared it with them. And every student in my classroom, all 24 of them, can access this straight away. The minute they go, assessments, click on it, or classroom folders, it's there for them to see. I hope that does make sense. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. So a bit of uh, a bit of something to uh, um, to give it a give it a bash. But I guess what I'm really excited about, John, is you're willing to give this a, a good bash. You know. So um, the next step is I think I've asked my boss to send you some uh, USB sticks with the new update. Um, have a play in updating one or two of your EXOs to the full Android device. Um, just give us a yell if you need any assistance. And um, yeah, we can we can play around from there. All right, beautiful. That sounds really good. Cool. Um, all right. Now, so, from, go ahead, go ahead. Yep. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say from my side, I know my Prin is, principal is very keen to make sure we've got all the bases covered to make sure it's safe um, for the kids. Um, and I'd be keen to have protocols set up. So I'm intrigued with, you know, like we were saying about Gringle at Gmail, mm -hmm. um, do the classes all have their own? Um, so how do we... Um, I don't know, it's like a nomenclature, isn't it? So do we have, you know, one two C dot Kringle at, at Gmail? Gmail. Correct, I'm yes. how, yeah. Yeah. So each class would be set up in a similar way. So I guess um, I'm just thinking I'll probably need to work out how we're going to set all that up. Um, exactly, exactly. And, and get permissions and all that sort of stuff as well. It's a tricky thing because you're trying to learn about it as well as telling people, educating others as well as getting permissions for something you're still not sure about. And unfortunately, they're <laughs> going to be looking at you for a bit of uh, guidance, like, what are we supposed to do? And you're like, I'm figuring it out exactly. as I go along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's part of what it is, isn't it? All the RCT stuff is learning as you go um, mm. and learning through experience. But um, from my point of view, it's just having teachers like yourself and Polly and uh, Russ and, uh, uh, and, and Menaka who's just willing to give it a bash. I mean, I, what was my, my mentor always told me, you can never steer a parked car. <laughs> <laughs> and I would rather have phone calls saying, John, the XO is not working because people are actually having yeah. a play. I would rather get those phone calls rather than, oh, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, and they've got <laughs> dust on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, listen here, yeah. mister. If you're not using your XOs, I know someone from WA who'd be willing to take it off your hands. Isn't that yeah, right, Mr. Wright? Exactly. That's right. We have some over here that they, they've been on fire, literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. That teacher never left the charger on overnight again after that, I'll tell you. Uh, did you is that the one that you sent? Yeah. Did you send that to us? Is yeah, the power pack. Yeah, oh you like that plastic welding. Oh, welding. Yes. yes, I remember that. Oh, I'm gonna have to edit that bit out as well. <laughs> that's all right. The new upgraded clips has fixed that issue, so that's that's good. Uh, exactly, that's exactly. Good. Sorry, Minaka, you wanted to say something. Um, I was just um telling John there are many tutorials. If you go to Google and um. 
of the Google. Ask for the tutorials yeah. about the Google Drive. And they have but, modules on how to learn and how to create a classroom folder. It's very in depth. And um, you do get, um, I'm not sure how Victoria works, but for us in New South Wales, we have to do some sort of professional learning and we have to show that we have done 100 hours of learning to yep. upgrade ourselves to keep our accreditation happening. So that goes yes. to that thing. So I usually go on in my free time when I don't have anything else to do and learn new things. That's how you have free time. I know Jeez. I don't have a life, but yes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's one so, other way to go. Yes. Okay. So that was Google Drive's modules. Is that right? Yes. That's what it says. Uh, Google Classroom modules. The minute you go and type on Google Classroom modules, it will give you all the tutorials. And you can start from the beginning and go back and listen to it again and in your own time and learn and play with it. Ah, uh, cool. Yep. Beautiful. I'm just searching now. So, yep. Okay. Awesome. Okay. That looks good. Yeah. Cool. I think I've had a look around in different spots, but I've sort of, you know, poked here and poked there, and uh, so there's obviously lots of gaps, but yeah, to sit through and just go through modules, uh, I think that would be a good way to go. Nice. Thank you. Alrighty, so um, uh, thank you for that, Manaka. I really, really appreciate you uh, just sharing a little bit more about Google, uh, uh, the Google apps. It's basically not just one app, it's the collaboration of Sheets, Presentation, Doc, Drive, Classroom, all together as one. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is right. Cool. So um, uh, now that we've got that uh, a little bit uh, under control, I wanted everyone to help me welcome Russell onto uh, the podium, so to say. And uh, Russell, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, sir? Yeah, um, here in sunny WA, 360 days a year. <laughs> um, I've been teaching music education for about uh, in schools for about 28 years, I suppose. I've been admin role for a year or two, and um, yeah, played professionally for a couple of years, many years ago, and have a great interest in using music to sort of get kids engaged, and then move them across to other areas of the curriculum. Tremendous. And uh, now you are, you also are quite keen uh, in terms of using some of the apps that we have in uh, uh, in mm. the X. So at, on the Android side of things, is that right? Yeah, when I swapped across, we missed the sugar ones, but um, you know, with the Android ones, obviously the platform came up a lot cleaner and um, far more professional look to it, um, and the programs that are available, for example, the one we look at this afternoon in the music area, um, is really quite extensive and um, well worth a look at. The, the simplicity of the machine defies its uh, complexity, so to speak. Mm. Um, this is one area that the kids, when they get into it, and when we first put the exos in, these little green and white things that look like there was something from Fisher and Price, um, the kids, once they got past that initial um, opening, um, they were really surprised at what they could actually do on the units. Well, speaking of uh, simplicity and uh, and, compl and uh, the complexity of it combined together, um, shall we have a mm -hmm. bit of a look at what uh, uh, at what one app can do? It's called Caustic. And sure. Yep. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me just connect to my XO. Let's make sure it's still there. Connect. So, now, John, just a couple of things as well for you, Mr. Casanova. What I'm doing so now. Come in. That's okay. Oh, What's you're, not, yes, you're not talking to me. You're talking to someone else, isn't it? Okay. So, John, what I'm doing now is I've actually upgraded, uh, mirrored my XO yep. to the big screen. So this is what you're seeing right now. Yep, BNC. I used to use BNC years ago. Oh, really? So you're familiar yep. with it? Uh, a little bit, yep. Cool, cool. So when you're in Android, yeah, you can actually connect your XO to the big screen or the interactive whiteboard using wireless means. You don't have to have cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, cool. Now, um, getting back to the, uh, to the basics of it, the app we're using is called Caustic. Now let me just see. Here we go. Do you guys see that on App Universe? So we go App Universe. Oh uh, yep. Okay. Just pressing that one time. Yep. And it's just listed alphabetically on the available apps that you can, you can download. And there's Caustic right there. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly press that and then press Run. Once it's running. 
it sure. just shows That's you welcome right. to Caustic, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, Russell, let, um, let's get started with uh, just having a... That was a good timing. <laughs> just a few intro of work, so that worked out well, I heard my name. There you okay, go. Welcome to Caustic 3. There we go. It's not something you use in your sink to clean out your drains, but it certainly will clean out your ears if you have it up too loud. So the first lesson we have with the kids is that we have a health and safety lesson about the volume, especially if they're under headphones. Beautiful. Otherwise, we'll have them back in 15 years suing us because we've affected their hearing. That's how long it takes when you listen to loud music before your ears go put. All right, so we're loading it up, are we? Yep. Bottom left-hand side of the screen. Now, there should be a um, on the side of the actual... Um, there we go. It's got the mixer one. All right, so here we go. Multiple channels. So we have, say, for example, 14 instruments. I mean, there's 12 in it, but you can replete a couple of them. Mm -hmm. um, and you just click on the number that you want. For example, number one. So punch in number one up the top left-hand side there in the little plus. Yes. And we're adding an instrument. All right, from there we might say, for example, at a, I don't know, we could go for a beatbox. Sure. One. So I'll punch that beatbox on mine. And I'll put the microphone in front of it. So we're going to tap beatbox one more time to open up that screen. Yep, open it up at the screen. What kit are you using? I don't know. I was, went with Bad Cat last time. Yep, so let's keep Bad Cat on. It's about as bad as I'll get. <laughs> you can, are, you, are you a dad by any chance? Yep. That explains the jokes, mate. That explains the jokes. Four times over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'll be here all week. Try the veal. <laughs> Hang on. Was that? Was okay. That? So, should be Mad Cat, perhaps. Maybe not Bad Cat. Yeah. Bad cat. <laughs> all right. So you got your little section down there, so you can have a look at the. Go up to the top. See with the four. Yep. See above the S and the little two little cogs. You get right four here. lines. Click on that. Yep. Click on that. And they'll open your individual pads so you can actually input the drum instead of pressing those little play buttons. Yes, so yes. now on the first one, you've got the, the kick drum and then the snare and so on, the hi-hat. So if you hit that, it'll sound like this. And that's just you okay. tapping. Yeah, that's just me tapping. All right, so if you want to record, you can hit the bottom right-hand button where it's got the record button. So like a little circle. Little, little circle section there. Right there, so yeah. You hit that little red button and then press your play. But don't forget to put your little uh, metronome one, which is the one, two, three, fourth track from the right. So the button, fourth from the right at the bottom. Yep, so turn that on. All right. Press play. So you clicked it. Yep. I clicked the little button on the metronome first. Oh, sorry, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now once you've clicked that, then you can press your record and play. So press the record button and you reply. And you'll hear it go. That's it. That one? Yep. And what do I do? So they see how at the bottom it's got the untitled and you're up to bar three. So you already got four bars of silence. So then you start hitting your snares in time to your uh, metronome. That's really cool. So it gives you a timing. Yeah. have to get the timing right. It makes it easier later on so you don't have to do a step edit. With a yeah. step edit, you can go to these little boxes and you can physically move them to the correct timing. So if they get them a bit off, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so that's a cool, the, I call that the Collie Minogue drum machine. Okay. <laughs> For reasons that will become obvious later. Right, now on the bottom left-hand side, let's go, you can go back and press play and have a listen to John's um, marvellous, marvellous oh, mix, geez, but we'll put something go. else in. So let's go to number two. Now go back to the so, press play. <laughs> that's that's my okay. madness. So, uh, let's go to a different okay. channel. So, yeah, go a different channel. So um, down the bottom, hit the uh, far left button, the multi one. Yes, grab something else. Example, bass line or let's whatever. Yeah. Or a eight bit synth if you like. Um, right, Mario Brother type sound. Oh, serious. And then hit the bass line. Yeah. Hmm. Hang on, I can delete and that. And bass line. So what was that eight bit synth? Here we go. Yeah, I've been synth. Yeah, that's sort of like Mario, you know, sort of stuff. You can actually sample stuff in your drum. You can actually sample stuff. Yeah, so try that. Sounds like Darth Vader's on the line. <laughs> We've been waiting for this one, everyone. We meet again at last. 
<laughs> so eight bit synth. Okay. All right, then you got hit on the buttons in the eight bit synth, so you've got angry robots and all sorts of things. Angry robots is okay. Hit the load button. All right. Bad guys theme. That's why you can see by listening to the sounds, you wouldn't want to have them up too loud. Mm -hmm. Car alarm. And all of those numbers on the screen, you can actually punch in. So we've got program A and program B. You see how it's got the T and then the bracket and the T and so on. All of that's like the old early um, synth programming. So each one gives you sort of like a bit of a wave section there and you can put it into sections. Oh, yeah. So it reads that program. Okay, so that's like the early synth stuff. Computer eyes. You know, so it sounds like um, R2-D2 being served. <laughs> All right. So that's so you might put that to your tune, and you could use a metronome again. You know, if you're wanting something in there. And what are you up to? Here we go. So use the keyboard um, that's on the screen. You can also use an external music keyboard um, plugged in via the USB on the side of your XOR. Nice angry robot. Sorry, I was. <laughs> I should really be paying attention. Yeah. So you can see what I mean. Each unit, there's you know 12 of them, and you can actually look at them individually as a um, standalone synthesizer unit, and you can actually edit them or use the presets by hitting the button. Right. So, do you want to go back to the bottom left-hand side, and we'll have a look at the multi-page? Sure. And pick something a little bit. So let's um, go from 8-bit synth. Um, yeah, just hit that again, 8-bit synth, and then let's just pick something like a bass line because it's an easy one to start with. Easy. So punch in bass line, tap it, and then click it in. And just the... Yep. And... Yeah, and then yeah, choose a sound, for example. Uh, so from your sound palette, there, let's go you can drive, use drive a, a... Yeah, drive, drive through or drive it. Yeah. Oh, dry throat, dry throat. Yeah. Drive through. Yeah, okay, and uh, you can either use the yeah the notes on the on the actual screen, um, as I said to you, and you can also change your um, entry point for it. So you get your waveforms at the top. So just press your record button and your uh, little um, triangle on the top on the bottom screen there. It's next to pattern. So if you go in there, your metronome's happening. And you can add something to what you've already got. Right. Can you guys hear that? Yep. Even with the screen lag. Right, and this is pretty much out there. Um, look, I'll just just go back to the bottom button again, yep, um, yep. where the little squares are under the legacy guide on the left there. Now, how'd you go? Right, so let's have a look at quick things like the mixer. Down the bottom, that's your mixer in terms of panning it left and right, putting a bit of treble or bass on individual instruments. Right. So hit the mixer button underneath 12, that's it, yep. Um, and then you can see you've got your volume for individual tracks. You can mute them, that's for M for mute, and S for solo. So if you just want to listen to one sound out of all of them, you can pick you can solo just that one, and it shuts everything else off at once. Or you can mute them individually and listen to them in a collection, a variety of whatever you want. When you've that's handy when you've got 14 of them in one there. Yeah, that would drive um, you your reverb nuts. and your delay. Mm. Yeah, your reverb and your delay. You've got so you can adjust your amount of reverb and delay, and high, mid, and bass for your um, EQ at the top. And each one of those can be set on the individual channel. All right. Okay, down the bottom again, hit the left-hand bu button, a little multi-boxes. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to let the answering machine get that one. Um, <laughs> master, so we go across to master. In the master, you can put master effects over the whole mix of it, not just two instruments. So reverb and delay, you might want to choose, for example, or sure, you might want sure. to pick something else. You can turn them on and off um, as well. Um, um, hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah, when, you, when, when the light's on, it's... Okay. okay. Nice. Uh, Hang on, excuse me. If they can't get me on the one, they'll get me on the mobile. <laughs> so, 
Mr. Casanova, what's this um, YouTube thing that you've just shared with us? Hang on, let me just uh, get a copy of that one. Hey, guys, sorry. <laughs> um, it was something I saw right. Something I saw on Twitter the other day, it was like a budgerigar that sings R2-D2. Uh, this oh, was nice. It. So it was, <laughs> I just thought it was fun. So it might be a good one for um, for the kids. John? <laughs> no John? worries, Russell. Yes. Sorry, mate. Um, can you talk amongst yourself for a minute? I've just got to put a message over to tell a staff member to shift their car if they want to take it home tonight. <laughs> Fair enough. Not a problem. Not All a problem. Okay. I'll be a couple of seconds. Yeah, you got it, mate. Um, so thanks for that, Russ. So um, I can actually get lost in this app for a very long time, um, especially, you know, with the USB uh, ports, you can plug in your USB keyboard. Um, I've got one of those um, electronic keyboards that I, you know, I bought from Toys R Us for my kid, and I didn't realize oh, wow. it, yeah, it, you can actually plug it onto the USB. It's really cool. Okay. Right, so that's um, the first part there. If you go down to the bottom and take go back to the arrow button and take you into the master. Yep, yep. You can actually record sounds like that and put it in there through the beatbox. Um, and then you've got the sequencer section. You hit on the sequence button. Hang see on. the bottom right-hand side? Yep, I see it. Yep. And then what you can do is with stuff you've recorded in your beatbox and your 8-bit synth, you can drag and drop, you can move it around, you can slow it down, speed it up, um, you can cut out individual notes. See on the left side. Sorry, sorry, sir. Okay. That's right. You're on a winner. <laughs> so on the left-hand side of the, where the two little keyboards and the little beatbox is, yes. there's a little scroll bar. See the scroll bar? And you should be able to get your hand on the screen and slide that down or up, depending on where you are, because you're effectively looking at a rack full of stuff. See how you can scroll down? Yeah. Keep going, yep. see if you can scroll up from other places. Okay, that enables you to flick from one screen to the other. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. And that also um, is a method of uh, that one you popped up then. There we are, that's the page. There are your individual notes. On the left-hand side, if you hit the keyboard, you would actually get the pitch of that note. And you actually can go to the screens, the squares, and actually touch them and add notes and take them away. Oh, look at well, that. Here we go. See, there's two notes there. There are your notes that you've played. Mm -hmm. right? So you can actually hit it once or twice or three times, and depending on once you like it to, it highlights it in three times, bang, 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 or delete it. I just deleted it, but I didn't want it to be deleted. Ah. Oh, well. Oh, well. That's what happens. It won't be hit now. <laughs> <laughs> there goes my chance. Forever gone in the cyberspace. Yeah. Now you feel the pain of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that enables you. So when we're talking about timing and getting it right in terms of with a metronome, yes. If you don't get it right, you can actually go back in there and drop and drag and move those individual mm -hmm. notes so that they're just see how you've got one in the middle of the screen like a G there, and it's the second one after the after the beat. Yes, so the yes, thick yes. line, and then you got one square. You could move that to be on the beat if you wanted it, or you could move it the other way. And then the metronome is there to so guide you, can adjust, you to catch it. Yeah, and you can adjust the velocity of the note for each individual note. You can have it up or down. You can have an accent on the note. You can have a glide from one to the other. You can obviously click and delete it by using the cross button. Nice. Um, I would thoroughly recommend your because it's um, Caustic's available on a number of platforms. Mm -hmm. I'd certainly recommend some of the YouTube videos on how to use it. Mm -hmm. And the manuals available online as well, and it's quite comprehensive. That's the latest version three, Caustic version three. Cool. Um, and just to let everybody know, it's 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 normally a paid app for Caustic, and mm -hmm. um, yeah. we've got uh, we, we've got the benefit of having licenses for all yeah. One Education users for that. So. Yeah. Your music specialist will probably find it particularly interesting because um, you can save your songs as a WAV file or an OGG file. Um, I usually use a WAV and then convert it to MP3. Okay. Um, but you can also save stuff as MIDI, which is the actual musical notes. So you can output the actual musical notes. Oh, you've gone to another screen there. Oh, sorry, I just and wanted you can to actually, say that. Um, yeah. So you can actually send it out to a music keyboard and load what you've got on your and then use those notes to play on another keyboard accessing its own sound banks. Right? Mm. So if you're doing it in a general MIDI save, which is 
a standard that was out a number of years ago where each number stood for a specific instrument, then you could do that. Um, that is so. What cool. else? Uh, yeah, the big thing is on the side of your XO, you've got your um, USB where underneath your headphone socket. Well, I don't input my stuff when I'm doing it with the kids when we're doing the final lot through the screen. I actually use a piano keyboard that's got a USB out and it just plugs straight into the side of the XO and I can use a full size keyboard with the XO. So I'm es essentially using the XO as a sound module mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, uh, and it's almost like a little recording studio, digital studio. Nice. The, um, the latest version 3 enables me to run my Novation keyboard ones as well, so I can use a keyboard that's got both keyboard notes and pads on them. I'm not going to assign things to the pads. As in like a, a, a drum pad? You know, like a drum sound, yeah, or somebody, you know, making a, a weird sound. This is a project I did with the kids um, where we gave them all a rough very, you know, of what how fast or the time was, and then I said to them, go away and create something of interest, then come back together collectively as a group and you have to agree, which meant you know certain notes didn't go with other notes and they didn't sound right, so the kids had to, with a bit of guidance, work in say the key of G, so they couldn't go too far wrong, um, and they'd use that scale as their basis for starting and then when they got together they had to work out what bits they need to take out to make the group sound better or what bits they need to put in to make the group sound better. Mm -hmm. And we started that in groups two and three, similar to a writing uh, activity or organising you know, debates or something like that. Um, they took the best of their information and put it together to make the groups you know, ultimately better than just their own. And they're only allowed to do one instrument themselves each. I haven't got to the stage of doing multi. Um, and then when they put them together, we had three or four. So I'm just going to play a... Um, a little track of just a, it's fairly short, of one that the kids were um, doing uh, about two weeks ago, and you'll, I'll play it collectively first, alright? So here it is. And you can hear the metronome in there. Mm. So if we go there and we say, all right, well, what, what is that? That's a real mess. So if we just wanted to solo each one, we could hear them individually. Here they are. All right, so now we'll put them all together. And here they come. Oh, just wait at the beginning. All right, here they come together. And I'll add them in as one at a time as we go. Right. So you can hear the kids, you know, individually they've got this little thing going in their head and they came together as a group and they had to sort of modify what they had so it fitted with the group. So it's another form of collaboration basically, just learning how to yeah. work with each other. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And I, I also wanted to do it so as a method of sort of getting them to realise that, you know, music's put together in isolation but at the same time you're still working with people. And uh, you know you can be doing something at home, and you could be working with someone on the other side of the world. You know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's so. That's, that's what we did with Caustic. Yeah, yeah. We did we did put it to a PowerPoint um, on a PC. Um, we wanted one of the projects to go to um, that. Now, can you go down to the bottom left hand side where you've got the little grid and jump in? Let's jump into the. Um, I want to head to the screen with the four lines so we can have a look at the song options, MIDI, etc. Oh, sorry, sorry, the options, yeah. Go back, go back one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so go back in the options. 
Um, all right, so you've got, you can put in your new songs, you can load them, you can save them, you can export them as a WAV file or an OGG file or a MIDI. Um, you can import stuff in as well. Um, the next one options, second one across, you've got the, vol the speed of your song and how much shuffle you've got in it. So that's sort of like the human feel, so to speak. In your options, you've got, um, you can adjust your keyboard size and etc. and all that sort of thing. Um, MIDI is the next one. MIDI stands for the Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Oh, someone's having the police visit. <laughs> what you at, John? I live in the city, uh, we so call, it's... <laughs> oh, yeah, we refer to the police and the police helicopter as the Thornley Lullaby. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's my kids. MIDI, so um, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, so that's lit up on the second one. Um, so you click on the middle one when you've got your, your keyboard there and it'll come up with your on-screen device. Um, and that enables you to map your keyboard as well so that if you want it split in different sections so you play part of one um, unit and then part of another in another section of the keyboard, you can set that up. All right. Mm. Um, yeah, very useful. Um, very addictive and, too. Well, yeah, there was a program put out by a company called Sony and that's a similar sort of thing but it used um, samples and wave loops and they called it um, Acid Express and you can understand why they called it Acid because it was quite sort of addictive. It's also very and trippy. this is the same. Yeah. yeah. See, you were also a dad. <laughs> we were all young once, my friend. We were all young once. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Billy Joel will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess in terms of putting this into the curriculum, how does this fit mm -hmm. getting all of the curriculum well, outcomes hit? Okay, so if you're looking at the outcomes, certainly um, tune manipulation in the section of um, IT, um, using um, IT units as, as a certain list tools to um, create new stuff. Your sampling and editing, which you can put your own samples in into your drums, uh, in your beatbox and so on, um, enables you to take um, environmental sounds and then put them into your compositions. So right the way through, it's embedded through the, um, the whole ethos of what you're going to be using when you're working in the arts area, which is creating something, you know, which can be then used to communicate with others. <laughs> and the skills that they pick up. They sort of need to know a little bit about reading perhaps, um, note values and there's an old saying, if you can sing it, you can play it and if you can play it, you'll eventually be able to read it. So I like that. Um, that takes, it takes you along the, the process. But certainly, yeah, most, inf most inf um, infectious program and the kids really enjoy it mm. and you must make sure they don't have the headphones up too loud because you, you know, don't want to Definitely. You'll blast the ears, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. I mean, I was playing around with this one, and it's uh, it's already quite loud. I can imagine what putting my earphones oh, yeah. would be in there. So, mm. Mm. sure. Right, folks. So uh, now let's open the floor for questions. Uh, sorry, John. The reason I've muted you is because we've got um, we've got a bit of sound uh, coming through from your microphone. I'll quickly unmute you, mate. Um, so, Polly, John, Menaka, any questions for um, uh, for Mr. Riley? Russell, it's absolutely fabulous. I'm still taking it all in. I'm not very musical, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have to play around. Like um, John was saying, he'll probably need um. A meeting on Tuesday. So. I'm mm -hmm. going to spend my two weeks holidays on this one, the school term <laughs> holidays. Playing Just with this one. Ma make sure you don't spend too long in one session, otherwise you get a sore neck. <laughs> <laughs> no. I better be careful then. <laughs> so, thank you for sharing this. It's fantastic. Our pleasure. And what I s said earlier, jump online, download the manual. That's okay. um, a nice 72 page or 74 page manual, which is worth using as a reference. I print it off, the kids go to it. And the other one is check out the YouTube um, video clips because um, they take you through step by step. No worries. Thank you for that. Awesome. Pleasure. All right, so uh, Mr. Fasanova, Ms. Betts? <laughs> I always think it's Dad. Uh -huh. um, but Russell, I think it's, you've done a brilliant job, mate. Um, I loved listening to you and, and hearing what you're doing. And I think for somebody, people ask me what do I play, and I think I just CD player. That's uh, as good as I get. 
Um, you can rip sections off a CD and make your own mix. <laughs> I'm, I'm into, I'm into yeah. that. So you know the I, song that came out years ago, Barbara Streisand. It went on and on and on. Well, oh, we yeah, sampled yeah. the names. We sampled the names of the teachers in it and put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good sport carnival. That one. <laughs> That's good. I like it. I like it a lot. This is a brilliant program for um, the kids that don't have musical instruments yep. and the ability. And to be able to have a look at it and see what's in behind it, I think it's fantastic. Um, yeah. And you've done a brilliant job in showing it. I much appreciate it. Thanks, mate. No worries. Cool. Um, so that's basically about it, folks. And uh, and oh, by the way, you can convert. I, I actually just showed on uh, a while ago how you can save. So you can go. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's export uh, onto Wave. Export if you want to take away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and if you're gonna. If you're going to export it into an OGG file, it'll choose the file automatically, but you can choose the um, bit rate. The bit rate means the higher the quality, the bigger the file. Um, usually go for as big a quality as you can because if you want to do something with it later, you've got all the full quality of it. Mm. That's, uh, that's kind of cool, actually. So, all right. Yeah, it is. I oh, can't wait to play, play with it some more. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably find, depending on your playback, when you save it as a WAV file, it actually probably will sound better when you export it and you open it up, depending because you know they've had to make some compromises um, in the EXOs because of you know the sheer nature of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you export it as a WAV file, you probably find the quality's um, better than you're getting at your EXO or your headphones. Really? I've got to try that. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. You know, because your, your headphone socket in your XO will be a certain rate. Correct. So if you save it as high a quality as you can and you play it through an MP3 player or you play it through a computer ah, or something yes. or whatever, I it mean, should sound better, you know. Consequently, it's going to be a massive file. Massive file. Oh, yeah. Well, what do you call a massive file for an audio file? Oh, that's a good question. Normally, uh, 30 megabytes? 30 meg? Yeah, that, that's more. Yeah, that's that's. Well, you look at when you've got a CD. If you've got a CD as a wave file for an average song, seven hundred megabytes, from, easy that one for the whole CD. Well, that's that's a whole CD, but you're not going to get one sound. And how many songs can you fit on a CD? Mm. No, I think of iTunes, and they're about three or four meg. They're not that yeah. big, really. Yeah. But it's, it's, that's because um, iTunes. Well, unless you set it yourself, um, mm. they try to do it at a lower rate, so you don't actually yep. get the higher quality. So you have to go into okay. your settings and then edit it so you get 320 um, kilobits, and you want to have you want to have it up as high as it'll go, so that you get the best quality sound. You can't hear it on an ordinary little headphones, but on a yep. big stereo or a PA, you can definitely hear it. Yeah, so I've noticed that on the stereo when I'm plugging it in at home that some of it yeah. sounds rubbish. And that's just, yeah. yeah so. And the other thing is it automatically filters um, frequencies below 10 hertz too, so you have to untick that box as well because that's pre-ticked on iTunes. Cool. Okay. So go into your settings and have a look at your import settings and make sure you get the highest and the maximum um, setting that's available to you. All right. So John, lots of lots of learning going on here, mate. Tell me about it, mate. Well, um, I better uh, <laughs> we better cut it quick. It's six thirty already, folks, and I better not let you guys uh, linger too long. Thank you so much for your participation, guys. And uh, uh, again, uh, join me in thanking Menaka and uh, jo uh, and Russell to uh, in in their uh, in their presentation. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a great one, guys. See you next time. <laughs> All right, guys, all the Thanks, best. Guys. And uh, just as a quick reminder, folks, if you do have an opportunity, um, come and like us on Facebook. We have, um, uh, not really like, but we actually have this uh, a promotion. If, um, if you'd like to do it, go to One Education on Facebook and just cut and paste. I vote for One Education to win Upgrade Your World AU and put it on the comments tab. And, yeah, that's me. Joe Boy is my real name. John is, well... <laughs> My mom goes, no one's going to do business with a Joe boy. So yeah, she changed my name to John. <laughs> <laughs> Dear John. Yeah, I know. 
anyway, so just cut and uh, cut that and copy that and put it on the comments pa uh, paste and uh, just paste that bad boy. You can do that once a day, and that way Microsoft is going to give us 50 grand. It's not one of those scams. I'm pretty sure you guys are nicking, but it actually is a promotion run by Microsoft. <laughs> it's a place in Africa. All right, folks, I'll leave you to it. Have a great afternoon and uh, sorry, evening, I should say, and we shall see you again next time. No worries, John. Take care. Bye. All, right. all the best. Bye. Bye. Thanks, John. Thanks, Polly. Thanks, Manaka. Thanks, all. Much appreciated. Bye now, guys. Bye.